Hello and welcome to a new session with edupediaworld.com, your favorite portal for online education. In the last session, we had started with control charts. We had seen the X bar and R charts. This session, we shall continue with the same. We will see some more variety of control charts, take up a few problems, and learn new techniques of drawing other control charts. Well, we have another way of drawing the X bar chart. Uh, in case if this, the value of the standard deviation is not mentioned, we can use the range itself. And this is called the X bar R chart. So let's see how to draw the X bar on R chart using this uh, uh, for the same question which we did previously of course here we will be using the factors and let me give you the formula and then we will switch over to the excel sheet where we can once again derive and see if we get the same chart so the formula for x bar r chart is uh, you have the central line at the same position x uh, that is x double bar you have the upper control limit at x double bar plus A2 and we will get the value of A2 from the same chart which we have times R bar and the lower control limit is at X bar minus A2 R and the value uh, okay so let's go to the Excel sheet and see alright so this is what we had done in the last class we have the R here we also have the X bar calculated yeah. so let me do here we have the X bar which is the same as we had previously and that's gonna be our central line N is the same uh, we don't need these now the upper control limit of course we need A2 the value of A2 A2 and the value of A2 in this case for n equals 4 from the chart is 0 0.73 now the upper control limit the formula as we had seen is x bar plus A2 times R bar so uh, x bar is here plus A2 which is this times the R bar and R bar we have calculated over here which is 0 0.29 so we have 16.1562 very close to the previous one in fact up to two decimal places it's the same and then the lower control limit again is x bar this time it's minus a2 times the r bar which is 0 0.29 and here yeah good so we've got the same values these are our upper and the lower control limits uh, let me highlight these by both the methods we have it the same yeah. so that's another way and of course we can go off drawing the same uh, control limits uh, control chart as we did uh, previously so we will get a control chart here with the lower and the upper values here with our central line and of course we will denote the numbers the first second third and so on here and then we can start marking our values as we had previously going this way fine so that was our X bar and then X bar and R chart and also we have seen the R chart now let's move on to the P and C chart so let me take another question and solve them the P and C chart well so this is the next question and this is related to the P chart uh, a production manager at a tire manufacturing plant has inspected the number of defective tires in 20 random samples with 20 observations each 
following are the number of defective tires found in each sample of course we have the data on the excel sheet as usual and then the question is construct a three sigma control chart with this information well so this is the information we have on the excel sheet here yeah you have totally 20 samples taken uh, here and then the number of in each time the number of observations taken were 20 and the number of defectives found in each of these uh, observations are mentioned here in the second column okay so now mm, let's see how to draw the control chart for this let me give you the formula first for P chart the formula is well P stands for proportion let me uh, give you a brief idea about this now here uh, it's this type of chart is possible when you have the number of defects out of the total value that is when you can find the proportion okay and if you just have the number of defects then we go for C chart that will be coming next so for P chart we have again the upper control limit uh, the central line the central line of course will be your P dash and then we have the lower control limit the upper control limit will be P dash plus Z times Sigma P dash and similarly the lower control limit will be P dash minus Z times Sigma P dash and we know that in our case we have taken Z equal to 3 as given here 3 sigma and what about sigma p well uh, sigma p is again the standard deviation of the proportion of the sample taken and that is given by the formula p that is the average value of the uh, proportion of defects times 1 minus p over n and the square root of whole so this is the formula to find sigma p that is the standard deviation of the proportion alright so let's go to the excel sheet and do the calculation so here we have three defectives out of 20 in the first sample so quite naturally if we just take the uh, 3 over 20 we get the proportion and that's 0 0.15 in the same way we can calculate the proportion for each of these and finally we can calculate the uh, total value of the proportion which will be our P dash so let me first calculate the total values the total total number of defectives will be equal to the sum of these values from here okay and the total number of observations we have are 400 so obviously my fractional defective now I can calculate this in two ways one is I can take this sum here that is as I have taken the sum I can take the sum of this and then I can divide this by the total number of samples I have taken that is 20 mm, or let me just write 20 here yeah so 0 0.1 that is the value of P in fact P dash P bar uh, we can also find this uh, by directly taking the uh, 40 over 400 so uh, let me do that here mm. this is 40 over 400 so that's yeah so that is my P bar that will be the central line and now to calculate uh, uh, of course to get the value of uh, sigma p we need to let me do that here standard deviation mm, standard deviation sigma p that will be equal to p bar which we have uh, let me take the square root of the whole thing square root of p bar mm, uh, multiplied by 1 minus P bar divided by the whole thing divided by so we'll have to put 
uh, another parenthesis here the whole thing divided by n now n in our case is uh, 20 yeah so let me write that annually 20 and then of course we are taking the square root of the whole thing so we'll again have to put another parenthesis here mm, yeah hope that works no find there's something wrong in the formula but yeah let me just have a look at this square root of p times 1 minus p and the whole thing divided by 20 and then the square root of yeah so that is the value of uh, standard deviation that is sigma p now z of course is 3 let me write that here z is 3 so if I have to calculate the upper control limit upper control limit will be p plus 3 sigma 3 times sigma that is the standard deviation and the lower control limit will be equal to p minus 3 times uh, sigma well now here we see that the lower control limit is coming in uh, negative but of course uh, whenever you get a negative number uh, in in uh, attributes not in variables um, you will have to take it as zero so effectively the value will be zero let me draw uh, uh, the uh, sh uh, control chart here now so the control chart will look something like this you have of course the lower value will be at zero this time the uh, central line is at 0 0.1 and the upper control limit at 0 0.3 so 0 0.1 somewhere here and 0 0.3 we will have a wider margin between the central line and the upper control limit because we have shifted this from a negative number to zero this was minus one uh, 0 0.1 0 0.1 so my, since negative is not allowed we take the lower control value as zero yeah and now we have the data which we can plot here for each of these first one is 0 0.15 so 0 point now this is at 0 0.1 this is at 0 and this is at 0 0.3 0 0.3 so we have the first value at 0 0.15 which will be here 15 the second is at 0 0.1 exactly central line the third is at 0 0.05 below this next is 0 0.1 again and then we have 0 0.05 once again we have next is 0 0.15 0 0.15 and so on now if we can just draw them this is how we are going to get it and we see that most of these are below 0 point in fact all of these are below 0 0.3 and above 0 so the processes in control finally take let's take a question on C chart and this is the question a number of weekly the number of weekly customers complaints are monitored at, uh, at a large hotel using a C chart complaints have been recorded over the past 20 weeks develop a three Sigma control limits using the following data so here we have the number of complaints coming every week then uh, and of course we see here that we cannot find the uh, proportion here because we do not know uh, the total number of uh, cu customers uh, which is actually infinite yeah so the number of uh, uh, complaints which we get uh, is uh, is just what we have as the data uh, so let's take this and calculate the C chart let me give you the formula beforehand that for C chart the upper control limit the central line and the lower contr uh, control limits are of course the central line will be the average 
a number of uh, complaints the upper control limit will be equal to average number of complaints plus z times root of c and the lower control limit will be c minus z times root of c we have our z as usual as 3 because we we have to draw our three sigma control limits here now uh, if we take we have totally 20 weeks and the number of complaints in these 20 ve weeks totals to be 44 we don't need to go to the excel sheet here uh, the average number of complaints that is uh, the c bar will be equal to 44 divided by 20 and that is equal to 2.2 now let's take the upper and the lower control limits the upper control limit will be equal to 2.2 uh, plus 3 times root of 2.2 and the lower control limit will be equal to uh, 2.2 minus 3 times root of 2.2 so let me just do that here mm. and this happens uh, this comes out to be 6.65 approximately and of course when we take this we will get a negative number uh, so a negative number will of course be equal to we will put it as zero so once again we have the values and with using these values we can very well draw the control charts